So we've seen that this concept of entropy explains the arrow of time. The idea is that a system will generally move to a, a situation with lots of microstates rather than one with only a few. It can go the other way, but generally the odds are on something like in one to 10 to the 1,000 against it happening. And this explains all sorts of things. However, that, as we mentioned earlier, that seems to give us a bit of a paradox. This law that entropy always increases, statistically, which is also called the second law of thermodynamics, says, for example, if you have a hot object and put it next to a cold object, what will happen is the heat will flow from the hot object into the cold object until the temperatures even out. But that's exactly the opposite of what we see in the universe. As we described earlier, we start off with a microwave background, which is extremely uniform, but now there are immense differences in temperature. So to help us understand this paradox, it's a great pleasure to have Charlie Lineweaver here, one of my colleagues here at ANU, who's thought long and hard about this. So Charlie, uh, is this a paradox? Does it violate the second law of thermodynamics? What's happening with entropy here? Well, I think the arrow of time, to understand it, you need to have start out with a low entropy situation and go to a higher entropy. For example, I have a cup of, of very hot water here. It's too hot to drink. And it's cooling down because the room is colder. So, um, so if we start out, as you pointed out, the microwave background is the same temperature, isothermal, to about a few parts in 10 to the, f minus 10 to the 5. So it's very, very, very equilibrium. It's at equilibrium. Yep. And not only that, it's also in chemical equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And also, remember, it's the, the material at that time was also very spread out. There, was n there were no stars, no planets, no galaxies. The matter hadn't, con hadn't congealed, hadn't uh, collapsed on itself. So it's very smooth in many, many ways. And that's why we say, oh, it's at equilibrium. And then you ask the question, well, how did it get out of equilibrium? The answer to that question, I think, is simple, but it's complicated because we don't understand it very well. But I, let me try to give you a simple example. Okay. Um, you, Lawrence Krauss talked to you about inflation. Mm -hmm. This is a little add-on we have to, in the very beginning of the hot Big Bang model. And this add-on says something like vacuum energy, false vacuum energy. There's a lot of energy in the vacuum. Just like if you have a, a pendulum and you hold it up and you hold it up here, it's got a lot of energy and then you let it down and it, it turns into kinetic energy. Similarly, in the very early universe, we think that the vacuum was full of potential energy. It's called the potential energy of the infliton. Yes, this is the Mexican hat potential we talked about being up at the it top. It could be many different shapes. That's one that's very popular. But the point is that we think that there was a, during inflation, we go through a point where we t convert that potential energy into real energy, into matter, you and me, for example. And so how much matter gets dumped into the universe depends on how much potential energy is, there is, just like how much kinetic energy you get out of a swing depends on how high you hold the swing. So we think of the early universe as evenly distributed matter. Remember, this vacuum energy is unclumpable. Therefore, when it dumps into the real universe, it will not be clumped. It will be homogeneously distributed. And that's the key. When you say, well, wait a minute, if it's homogeneously distributed, is that high entropy or low entropy? And the weird part now is that we think that is the lowest entropy you can do with matter. And then you'll say, well, wait a minute, if I have a perfume bottle here and I, it's connect, all the perfume is in the bottle, I let it out, then it will spread out and the even distribution of the perfume molecules will be highest entropy. And now Charlie comes along and says, the even distribution of matter is the lowest entropy. And the, the reason that those two are different is because the perfume molecules and the diffusion is controlled by kinetic energy and the homogeneously distributed matter is controlled by gravity. For example, if you take that perfume bottle and make it a trillion, trillion times bigger and put it in empty space, that molecules will not go like that. They will stay there because it will be gravitationally dominated. The same reason why we have our atmosphere and the Earth is held onto the Earth by the, the, gravitational form of the, the gravitational force of the Earth. So what I'm saying is that the initial conditions, whether they're high entropy or low entropy, depends on whether you're kinetic energy dominated or gravitational energy dominated. The early universe is gravitationally dominated, therefore it's low entropy, despite the fact that the photons that we measure are at isothermal conditions and therefore at equilibrium. So does this, 
I mean, we, we've understood it. I talked about earlier in the course how structures form. You get these very small primordial fluctuations left behind by quantum mechanics in the era of inflation, which then by gravitational instability get bigger and bigger. So we understand the important the point about that is that it's homogeneously distributed. Very, very few over densities. The tiny, tiny over densities, 10 to the minus 5 over density. That's essentially very smooth. Yes. Um, so does that actually mean that the second order thermodynamics just doesn't apply in the situation? No, or no, does not it, Or do you define some new no, that's form right. of in, uh, right. entropy? Right, we have to define a new form of entropy. And, and now I should give you a caveat. We don't understand how to write a formula that says, here's the entropy as a function of how collapsed matter is. That's something that's a, a new field. We're not sure how to write this down. A few people have made some conjectures, like Penrose, about the vial conjecture. I won't go into that. But the point is that in gravity, because it has negative heat capacity, it's just the reverse of what we're used to. That's why you don't find gravity in thermodynamics books. You look under gravity in the index, you will not find it. Hundreds and hundreds of books on thermodynamics have been written about well, we've written about thermodynamics, but gravity is not included. If you're going to talk about gra the entropy of the universe, you have to include gravity, and that means you're going to reverse the sign of the entropy that you're used to. And for, for example, what I'm saying is that when matter is evenly distributed, that's the lowest entropy state. When matter is, has collapsed into a black hole, that's the maximum entropy state with one caveat that this thing is going to evaporate into massless particles that then spread out everywhere. Thank you.